On tertiary education, the University of Ghana, Lagon, has started, a, um, I beg your pardon, um, allocating new rooms to continuing male students of the Mensa Saba and Commonwealth Halls. This is part of the new residential policy adopted by the University of uh, the University Council, I should say, following recent violent clashes between the students of the two halls. The room allocation, which started on Wednesday, comes a day after some aggrieved students of both halls held a news conference to protest the new policy which they believe is meant to only solve accommodation problems in the school. A letter cited by TV3 indicates that students have February 10, 2023 up to that time as the deadline to accept or deny the new rooms allocated to them. And uh, this uh, actually started from the fact that um, students of Mensa Saba and Commonwealth Hall a few months ago clashed on campus. You know, and uh, those images on your screens show the a testament of what happened as of the time. And then also, um, a few days ago, when they intended to hold a press conference, there seemed to have been a scuffle between the University of Ghana security or campus security and the police who came in to stop them from uh, undertaking that presser. So let's uh, pick the thoughts of uh, Raymond Butchery, who is the convener for the Mensa Saba and Commonwealth Hall students. And um, clearly, it's on the back of the new strategy that the school is adopting to give or allocate new halls to them. Uh, good, good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Midday Live. Good afternoon and thank you, Jim. Uh, how are the students receiving this latest development and um, specifically if you can also tell us about the letter that you received from the university? Okay, so um, it's, it's, uh, be to begin with, students have now been hit with the reality of everything that is going on. And a lot of, I received messages and some calls from students who are saying that, uh, how are they going to cope with this? Because most of them cannot afford this new figure that they have to pay for their assigned rooms. And even the plight of those that had no hands or we that we are in no way privy to what happened, it's even more sad. So students are very much agitated. They are, it's a mixed feeling kind of situation. Mm. And the letter or the, you, are you asking about the arrangement that was yes. sent? Yes. So with that arrangement, moving the male students of Mensa Saba Hall and Commonwealth Hall to the Diaspora and Ujjal Halls is a precursor to implementing an in-out-out-out system where they would only take level 100 in the traditional halls and after level 100, you go out to find accommodation with the private hostels. Hmm. And yes. that kind of system has actually been in place. It's not entirely new, is it? Where, um, you know, the school decides whether it's an in, out, out, in, or in, out, in, out, whichever strategy or policy they intend to enroll. Why is it that this time around, the student body led by yourself and, you know, some others are opposed to the strategy of the school? Okay, so um, the University of Ghana have already implemented an in, out, out, in policy, where you come in level 100, you get accommodation, then level 200 and 300, you go out, and then 400, you come in. Mm. That was uh, to solve an accommodation deficit. But then, I think in 2010, the then VC, Professor Ernest Aite, uh, was advised on recommendations to decongest the halls. So, when this was done, the, uh, uh, the policy of in, out, out, in was abolished. And by then, the new halls that were, uh, that was Alexander Coppon Hall, Taylor Lehman, Jim Nelson, and Elizabeth C. were also put up. So there was more space for students to move into. Okay. So that effectively, effectively brought an end to the in, out, out, in policy. And mm -hmm. students were okay, now okay. And there was a surplus in accommodation. Mm -hmm. Now, over a decade to now, we've, we've now, we are back in an accommodation deficit. Okay. Because more hostels have not been put up. And each passing year, more admissions are taken in. Mm. So already the, uh, there's an accommodation crisis. You come in level 100, and then you have few slots to um, fight for. So on a first, serve, uh, first come, first serve basis. Okay. So you just have to do your best to get that. So that is the whole basis with it. And we feel that if now you are bringing it back, uh, we, we, we moved away from it. And we hope that by now we would get we would have advanced with regards to, I mean, solving the accommodation problem. Mm. You get it? And, 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 and that we, know, 
we know also that some private hostels were built and why is it that students are unable to go there? Is it an issue of cost? Yes. Well, with the other hostels that were built, that is the Diaspora Halls, it was relatively affordable at, from the beginning. Okay. But I think about two or three years ago, an issue came out with regards to the debt involved. Mm. And due to that debt, the, they had to privatize these halls. And now students have to bear an extra cost. So I think in Diaspora, they used to pay 1300 for an academic year. Okay. And that was increased to over 2000 students mm. due to this debt issue that came up. And even some annexes of traditional halls were also privatized or used as collateral. And they are also charging different figures compared to the other uh, annexes and blocks okay. in the same halls. Right, Raymond, so let, let's make progress here. I know that you held a press conference a few days ago, yes. threatening legal yes. action. What, what, what's uh, the latest regarding that? With regards to the press conference? Yeah, the, the, the legal action you intended to take if the school went ahead to implement so, it. Yes, uh, we, we made some contacts with uh, some lawyers, but then unfortunately due to the Christmas activities, courts are on recess. Mm. So uh -huh, we also don't really have time on our side. So that was the, a little, the still meet we had with the mm. legal side. But then nevertheless, court will resume in January. And okay. definitely, yes, some things can be done. Okay. And, and, and finally, are you looking at other ways of engaging the management of the school beyond just taking legal action against them? Are there avenues for, um, you know, verbal conversations around how to resolve the, the, the situation? So we are absolutely open to having a verbal conversation with school management. We will collaborate because we believe that we can, there can be a long-lasting solution to these issues of violence. And displacing the students won't necessarily solve them. And I applaud the school for taking steps with security by installing CCTV cameras, which is a very good step in the right direction. Right. So beefing up security is one thing that will also help catch those that are culpable in these acts. Hmm. So, okay. yes, I think from there we can also find more long-lasting solutions. But then I reservedly believe that moving us out won't really solve the problem of violence problem. because the same cohort of students, yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much.